morning, everybody. Um, as we all know, this week it's been a lot of updates on the uh, PPP program that has been put out by the SBA. Um, again, last night um, we got much more um, an update from the Treasury related to some updated guidance, as well as today's April 3rd, which is the initial day for applications. So I wanted to kind of do a quick video on some updates and kind of chat through, chat through some things so everybody's kind of aware of the, uh, the updates at hand. So I'll kind of share my screen here and uh, uh, some of the comments that I have kind of here as we roll forward. So um, the updated guidance um, was sent out last night. You can find that Treasury website. It's 31 pages if you want to read it. I have a link here in this um, webinar um, um, document will be shared. Um, the biggest, I think, clarification point is that 1099 contractors cannot be included in your payroll amounts. I know that we have discussed in the past, it's to be determined or whether or not they're going to include it or not include it. They've explicitly stated that they're not included. This actually really helps the time it's going to take to calculate the, uh, the PPP amounts. With that being said, it obviously won't allow you to um, take advantage of the, the money paid to them. Um, I do think the a big reason is this, that the contractors themselves can apply for PPP separately. So, um, you know, if you as a company is applying for it and then they're applying for it, technically it's kind of like double dipping along the way. So um, again, tenant contractors cannot be included. Um, the interest rate is now 1% on the loan versus 0.5%. The term is still 24 months. Again, not a huge material difference. A 1% loan for 24 months is great, especially if you can get some of this forgiven. It appears that payroll can now be the last 12 months versus 2019. Um, some guidance I got from uh, a bank um, that have been in communication with this morning on their application, it did say um, run the payroll reports on the last pay period before you fill out the loan application. So the PPP loan application, fill it out today on April 3rd, let's say your twice a month payroll on March 30, uh, you know, March 15th, March 31st, and your payroll reports will go from April 1st, 2019 through March 31st, 2020. Again, though, confirm with the bank um, specifically on this. Um, the business does have to be open and payroll ran by February 15th, 2020 to be eligible. A lot of the uh, forgiveness uh, expenses, um, uh, mortgage, uh, rent, utilities, et cetera, um, they do, those, a lot of those expenses needed to be in place before February 15th, and, and that's always been in place. And then one of the things that's been kind of confusing as we've seen some of these reports and schedules that banks have been putting out is that federal taxes paid by employee are excluded from the calculation. So what does that mean? Well, we've been looking at gross wages for everybody, right? In relation to, hey, this person makes $50,000 a year. With that being said, what they're basically, from, from what the guidance set states, there's a specific date range that exists that you can exclude it, but for some of the, the bank that I've seen, the application is they want to exclude it for the entire 12 month period that you run the payroll. Um, what this basically means is on the employee side, this is the employer, side has always been excluded. You cannot add that from a, an employer FICA, like Social Security, Medicare. But if an employee makes $50,000, then you need to reduce that amount by their federal income tax withholding and their Social Security and Medicare withholding additionally. So the amounts that actually reduce the amount of money that they take home um, in their net paycheck. Um, with that being said, the amount that the, the withholding from a state standpoint, so if they're in a state that does have income taxes is, is, uh, is included in the calculation, right? So basically that, that is included as part of it, whereas the, you need to reduce the wages per employee by the Social Security, Medicare, and federal income tax withholding on the employee side. Bit confusing there um, along that aspect. Um, what to do now? Um, number one, I advise you to the bank that, you're, uh, that you bank with or multiple banks you bank with, you need to go out and reach out and ensure your bank will allow you to participate. Again, there's going to be huge volume with all these banks in terms of them actually um, being able to process these loans. So many banks, as we said in the webinar yesterday, are actually going to just use their customers. With that being said, um, I've seen two specific situations where one bank uh, has, has required you be, to be a, a, a bank account member or a, a deposit account, um, have a deposit account, even if you just have a credit card account, right? So obviously a lot of these banks, you can get a credit card and or a bank account. One of um, a client of mine has a credit card with the bank, but they don't have a deposit account yet. They can't apply because of their requirements. Additionally, I've seen banks that require you to be both a loan account holder and a bank deposit holder. What does that mean? That means that you need to either you need to have a bank deposit account with them 
and either a credit card line of credit or loan, which again is excluding a lot of people that don't have a credit card loan or line of credit with that bank. So obviously it brings a lot of frustrations with people if that uh, has come up. With that being said, I think number one, go to the bank that you bank with and see if you're applicable and any, that you can apply. Um, number two is wait for your bank to provide their application form and supporting schedules required to be filled out. The application form that the Treasury has put out or the SBA has put out changed yesterday from the original one. With that being said, all of this is going to be bank specific. So before we go too far down the line, let's wait to get that information and that application form and then get ready to fill out once they provide it. If they provide it this morning, great. They may not have it ready to go. It may come tonight. It may go next week. We don't know yet, right? Once you get that, that's when you can begin executing. I'm pretty positive that all banks will require some sort of supporting schedules to support the calculation of the monthly average payroll of the, the amount of um, employee compensation over $100,000 of you know backing out this kind of employee withholding portion that I mentioned. So again, it's all gonna be custom based upon each specific bank because we're all learning and so dynamic. So I would just wait before you move too far ahead of you know the spectrum here. And like I said, the next bullet point, I've seen variances in date ranges, data to collect calculation, et cetera. So again, don't go too far. With that being said, I would uh, recommend doing two things. Number one, pulling the other request list items, which I have in the next slide. This was in my um, webinar yesterday, or PowerPoint yesterday. Um, I'll go back through that here in a minute. Um, so you can get all that data collected, ready to go. And then number, the last thing is here is review your payroll data reports from your payroll provider. See which reports, are gonna give you the information you need, right? Um, a lot of their reports or the, their data or the request is going to be each pay period broken out by employee, right? So you need to ensure what are those reports uh, and where are those reports that I can pull to, to do that? Because they're gonna to want to be able to detail and look at specific things, right? You're gonna also need to ensure that the reports you look at have all the information such as the federal um, employee withholdings, the group healthcare insurance, company contribution, the 401k company contribution, right? All that type of stuff that's gonna be calculated in here. So you need to have a huge data dump um, for that time period. So at a minimum, you can look at the payroll data reports you have and maybe generate one from 2019 and generate one from the last 12 months to get ready for the calculation once you confirm the date ranges. Um, I have seen some payroll providers, um, I won't name them, that have created reports specifically for the PPP that actually are inaccurate. So um, don't, you know, when you go to those reports, um, don't just go ahead and rely on them initially, but this is where it goes into using, or, you know, having some sort of advisor or a second layer of check to ensure that you're calculating things right. Because again, the, the two things you, you want to confirm, number one, you want to make sure that the information you're providing is accurate. So your application can process as quickly as possible. And then number two is that you want to make sure that you're capturing all information and all relevant payroll data to maximize the loan that you're getting, right? And, and uh, assuming that you're gonna be able to offset and use it in the next eight, eight weeks to get that loan forgiven. So again, be careful with those PPP loans that are in the payroll provider console and portal. I've seen that they're not accurate. Um, they've actually, uh, uh, one of them specifically has double calculated the federal tax withholding. So the amount of money that they're showing you can get is actually much less a material amount than actually what is relevant. So again, be careful with that. Leverage your advisors, your your accountants, your uh, you know financial advisors, things like that that, that can help you along the way. Um, here's the request list. We'll kind of go over it again. Again, the payroll detail reports, full of 2019, 2020 year to date, the last 12 months to get ready for this, but it needs to have all the data we said. Have your 2018 tax return file, 2019 tax return ready to go. If you don't have that file, just have your 2019 P number form balance sheet year to date, in case they request it. Your bank again, it depends upon the bank. And the documentation showing funds receiving from the idle since 13120. This would be much more relevant around the 10K grant if you receive that. And then, you know, um, payments and bills related to group health care payments and retirement benefits that you're including in your payroll calculation. So again, there's something that you can do moving forward currently. Um, um, gathering this information, understanding the payroll, you know, reports that you can have. Um, understanding what is included and then once you actually get the application and the schedules from your bank of what's required then you can begin to execute. We have been at a conflict supporting our clients and doing various calculations along the way based upon the changing guidance but because we're now getting more of a finality of guidance and it really is I'm, I'm seeing that it's going back to the bank specific to the bank. The new application form um, that came up yesterday that kind of two or three pager um, that has been changed but I've seen a bank 
with their application forms pressed out, to, uh, pressed out today um, using the old application form. So again, this is where I would just wait at this point, have the information ready to go. When you receive the information, then begin to move forward and then execute um, the application in the meantime um, along the way. So hope this was a, uh, um, a relevant and a helpful quick little video. Um, again, happy to answer any questions or comments that kind of happen along the way. You can send an email, I guess, to webinar at accountfully.com. That's really where we're kind of organizing the data at this point. Um, this will be all shared on social media as well. So, you know, within the comments of that, we'll, we'll try to be um, as responsive as we can over the next several days. Um, obviously, we, we, we have our clients that we're helping support along the way. But obviously, if you're not a client of Accountfully, again, we'd like to try to advise you and help you out as much as we can. Thanks. Have a great day.